Okay, good morning everyone and uh, welcome to our first class on Holy Spirit. Yes, we're going to learn about the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. You might be wondering um, where the name given for this, who's supposed to be co your course teacher? Paul Emmanuel, and you might be wondering if my name is Paul Emmanuel. <laughs> well, it's not. Um, I'm not Paul Emmanuel. I'm Selena, and I'm just filling in for Pastor Paul Emmanuel. He has had an emergency travel that he had to make. So he's traveling, and in the um, so this week and the next week, I'll be uh, teaching um, on the Holy Spirit. Do you want to come and sit here? Come, I can see you then. Okay, I'll be teaching on the Holy Spirit. And then after he's back, he will walk you through the course. Okay? Everyone has got your course uh, material? Not yet? There are some more. Uh, can you please? Okay. Online students, you've received it. Our in-person students... Um, Yes. Okay, we'll um, we'll begin. Uh, if you all don't have course uh, material, then maybe yeah, you've got it. Okay, good. There are some of them here who need that course material. Can you please give it up in the front here? Thank you. Okay, before we begin studying about the Holy Spirit, let's um, pause for a word of prayer. Let's pray, please. God, we thank you that you are such a loving God. Your plans and your purposes for us are so great and so big, God. We cannot even imagine or fathom, comprehend or understand, God, all the things that you have planned for us. But we know that your plans for us are good and your plans for us is perfect, God. In your good plan and perfect will, God, you have revealed yourself to us. We thank you, God, for the Father heart of God that we can enjoy, that we can relate to, that we can experience. We thank you, Jesus, that you came down on the earth, that you revealed the Father to us that even as you lived here on the earth, you modeled for us, God, that we too can be like you. We thank you for what you have done on the cross. We thank you, God, that you have not left us as orphans. You have given us your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are our teacher, our guide, our counselor, our paracletos, the one who comes alongside to aid us, to help us, to strengthen us. We bless you. We thank you, God, for all your work in our lives, the way that you lead us, for the way that you encourage us, for the way that you teach us, God, and for the way that you manifest yourself to us. We thank you that for this opportunity to learn about the Holy Spirit. And we pray, Father, that even as we learn, Holy Spirit, that you would come and you would reveal yourself to us and that we would uh, have that deep, intimate, and personal relationship uh, with you. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so who is the Holy Spirit? You have the mic, so you can just pass the mic on and who is the Holy Don't look at your notes. Who is the Holy Spirit? Please speak in the mic so that our online students can also hear you. If it's green there, it's on. You can just speak. Presence of God. He's the presence of God, okay? Can you please pass the mic quickly? Thank you. Holy Spirit is a comforter. Helper. Teacher. Presence of God. Helper. Teacher. Who is the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit is a teacher. God. He's God. Thank you. Please clap for him. <laughs> he needs this as a clap. Yes, thank you, Joanne, as well. The Holy Spirit is God. The presence of God, the helper, the encourager, the strength, 
the one who strengthens, the one who teaches, the one who consoles, the one who counsels, the one who comforts is all what? Is what aspect of the Holy Spirit? What aspect? The function or the role of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit is God. Okay? He is not just the... Some people think the Holy Spirit is what? He's a spirit being, okay? Yes, he is a spirit being. God is a spirit being. But what do people think about the Holy Spirit? Huh? Lower ranking of God, okay? Uh, yeah, some of them think the Holy Spirit is a power of God. Yes, thank you, Joanne. What else? They think Holy Spirit, like they say Holy Ghost, so they think he's some ghost, you know. <laughs> yes, sorry, what did he say? Can you please use the mic, please? If you can just pass the mic quickly, uh, leave it on, just quickly pass it, it'll help. I think we need three mics here, not one. Don't do that to the mic. You can just see if it's green there. It's not good to bang the mic. Just see if it's green there and then it's done. Just give it to Vinay, he'll help. Give it to Vinay. Oh, some people think he's a mediator between us and God. Yes. Vinay, just handle the mic, please, for us. Yeah. Anyone else? Anyone else? What do people think about the Holy Spirit? They think he's the okay, presence of God. They think he's some force, right? You know, a powerful force. Some people also think that he is wind. But yeah. is the Holy Spirit wind or force or power? So that's how he comes. But who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit. Everyone, who is the Holy Spirit? God. Holy yes, Spirit that's very, very important. Okay. That is the key foundational truth for us to know that the Holy Spirit is uh, God. Okay. Um, so is Holy Spirit a person or he is just some force or he's a power of God? What do you think? Holy he's Spirit a person. A Why do we person. say he's a person? Sorry? Person. Okay, so he has a personality, right? Because he has uh, feelings, he has emotions. Yes, what else? Holy so Spirit Holy Spirit is a person? Yes. One minute. He's our helper. Okay. Yeah. So as a person, he's a helper because some of you as in your personality, you are very helpful people, caring. You're a good counselors, comforters, encouragers. Okay. Holy Fine. Spirit so he's exactly Holy Spirit sure. is a person. He's not just some force. He's not just some presence. He's not just the power of God. Now, these are important truths. Okay, so when we say that the Holy Spirit is a person, what are we trying to say? When we're saying Holy Spirit is a person and he's not some force or some power, what are we trying to say? Yes, he has a mind, he has will, he has emotions. What else? His spirit, okay. When we say he's a person, it means that he can relate to you and me as people. Yes or no? You and I are persons. You and I are people. Okay? If he was just some force or wind, he could not relate to us. And we can't relate to him. Okay? So that is very, very important. And of course, you know, Holy Spirit is a spirit being. Because God is a spirit being he has no when we say spirit being means what what do we mean when we say that holy spirit is a spirit being you can't limit him to natural realms like the body or gender okay you can't uh, minimize him to or confine him to a gender or a or a body yes 
when we say he's a spirit being means he has no form or shape but yet he's a person he has a personality just like all of you have personalities yes or no yes that makes you a person that makes you different from each other so we will study about the personality of the holy spirit in chapter two okay but the holy spirit is a person and hence he can relate to you and you can relate to him isn't that wonderful yes okay so is the holy spirit created by god or is he god he is god he's not a created being are you and me created beings yes you and i are created by whom by god right but the holy spirit is not a created being okay um does the does the bible refer to the holy spirit as god or does the bible refer to the holy spirit as some person or some force or some power of god yes so the bible we look at various instances now we look at various scripture passages where we see that you know the holy spirit is referred to as god and hence he is god okay now why are we saying all of these things because many people have a very wrong idea about who the holy spirit is okay and the holy spirit is a very misunderstood person in the trinity Okay. People can understand God the Father, people can understand God the Holy Spirit, uh, sorry, God the Son, that is Jesus, but God the Holy Spirit is somebody who's very misinterpreted or misunderstood person in the Trinity, okay, because there's some, some people think that he is some magical power, you know, he's some power, he's some force, some think that he is fire, because on the day of Pentecost, you know, they see tongues of fire. Or some people just think he's a power of God. Or some people think he's just God's active force. Okay. With which they can do signs, miracles and wonders. So he's not just some force. He's not some active force. He's not some ghost. He's not some power of God. But he is God. Amen. He is God. So the Holy Spirit that says just like God, the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is also God. So we believe in how many gods? One or three gods? One God. Are you all sure? One yes, God. we all believe in just one God. Where does it say in the Bible? Now, whatever we say, we need to establish the truth in the Bible, right? Where in the Bible does it say that we worship only one God? It's not there in the notes. <laughs> Some people are searching the notes. Okay. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. You know where Deuteronomy is, right? It's in the Old Testament or New Testament? In the Old. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. All of you have your Bibles? You can open your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Can somebody read that, please? Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, the only Lord. Amen. So it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is, is one. Okay. So we believe in only one God. Okay. But we believe that this one God exists eternal, ex, ex, uh, eternally in three persons. Okay? So we believe in one God, but we believe that one God exists eternally in three persons. Okay? Can you all remember that? One God who exists eternally in three persons persons and that is what we human beings have called as trinity so what is trinity one god who eternally exists in three persons what is the meaning of eternally 
never ending forever no beginning no end always was always is and always will be eternal who is eternal god is eternal right because there's no beginning there's no end he always was he always is he will always be so what is trinity do we find trin the word trinity in the bible no we don't find the word trinity in the bible but for us to understand this god who eternally exists in three persons we have coined the word word as trinity so basically trinity is what triune th three in one okay three in one so it's just man's way of saying three in unity okay one god who eternally exists as three persons very very important so what is trinity what is trinity one who eternally exists in three persons now you need to know this very very clearly okay one god who eternally exists in three persons okay now some people who have tried to understand god they say that you know god is like um, uh, water ice and gas gaseous state solid liquid and gaseous state is that true no because we're saying that it's the same component component h2o which is existing in you know it can either be water liquid solid or gas but here it's it's one god who has who's eternally existing in three different persons but each person has the same nature the same character the same attributes the same essence that makes god god but three of them are three distinct personalities yet they are one even though they are three distinct personalities who eternally exist as three distinct personalities if you want to write all of this down you can write it helps you but it's important to know that each one of them have the same nature have the same attributes have the same characteristics have the same essence that makes god god amen okay so trinity again i'll repeat is one god who eternally exists in three persons and these are three distinct persons now some people try to understand trinity by saying uh, for example we'll take um, um okay my example okay so for all of you who am i a teacher right now for my parents who am i their daughter right for my siblings who am i their sister right um uh, and in you know okay so i have three different roles but i am the same person so some people say that trinity that its trinity is like that you know one person but having three different roles or functioning in three multiple roles is that right or wrong it's right or wrong it's wrong because it's not just one person but it's three distinct personalities that is what we are trying to say it's three distinct personalities each of these three distinct personalities have different roles it's not one person functioning in different roles it's not for me for me now when i come to bible college i am have the role of a teacher when i go back home i have the role of a daughter okay or when i am at the church office i have the role of a you know um, a, a responsibility to oversee my team a team leader it's not that it's one god but three different distinct personalities did you get that yes the three distinct personalities and each of those three distinct personalities have the same nature have the same characteristics have the same attributes that make god god now what are the nature or the attributes that make god god 
eternal okay one of the nature of god is eternal omnipotent okay what else omniscient what else omnipresent yes anything else sovereign okay sovereign eternal um, omnipotent omnipresent omniscient and all of these are the nature of god so all of this nature is found in the person of god the father all of these natures are found in the person of god the son and all of these natures are found in the person of god the holy spirit do you understand so all three are distinct personalities separate but yet they function as one there's perfect unity in the trinity okay we don't find the word trinity in the bible we find what is the word instead of trinity in the bible yeah the the word mentioned is godhead so when wherever we read godhead like in romans chapter 1 verse 20 can one of you please read romans chapter 1 verse 20 please Romans one twenty online students, you can also feel free, please, to unmute your mics and read. We can hear you. Anyone wants to read? For since the creations of the world is invisible, attributes are clearly seen. Things of him that is his eternal power and divine nature, being understood by the things that are made. even as eternal power and godhead so that they are without excuse amen so here the word godhead it's talking about the holy trinity or the triune god or the trinity okay now uh, in the nkjv version in 1 john chapter 5 verse 7 uh, it mentions very clearly the trinity to us so can somebody read if you have an nkjv version can one of you please read 1 john chapter 5 verse 7 please anyone can you just raise up your hand anyone has a mic or feel free to unmute your mics online students and you can read okay when there are three the pair of witness in heaven the father the word and the holy spirit and these three are one amen okay so here we say that we see that God the Father, the Father, the Word. Who is the Word? Who is the Word mentioned here in one John chapter five verse seven? Says, for there are three that bear witness in heaven. Who are the three? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Now, if you look at the word Word there, the W is small W or capital. if it's talking about just word that we are speaking it should be a small w but it's a capital w so it's referring to a personality it's referring to a person so who is the word here yes thank you joan and saubagya it's talking about jesus how do we know the word is referring to jesus yes john chapter 1 where john introduces the logos the greek word for word is logos the the old new testament is written in greek so he the logos means word so he is introducing jesus to his audience and so he's saying in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and he was with god in the beginning all things were made through him without him nothing was made that has been made in him is light and there is no darkness at all so here the verse one is very very important it says in the beginning was the was the word to capital w the word was with god that means with god the father god the holy spirit and this word is not an intermediary being this word is not some force or some power this word is god and so john is introducing Jesus as the 
Logos. And if you study the book of John, you will understand why he's doing that because you will understand, you'll, you'll learn about it in the second semester. You know, where I'll be teaching you Christology and I will teach you in depth about this, about the Logos and why he introduces uh, Jesus as the Logos. For now, you need to understand just that the word is Jesus Christ. So here, when it says the Father, the Word and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. Very clearly mentioned there. These three are one. Okay. So Shakti says, can we call him three gods? What do you think? No, we can't call him three gods. There is no three gods. There is one God who eternally exists in three persons. Now, Trinity is something that is very dif difficult for us to comprehend and understand. We just have to receive it by faith. But for God, there is no confusion. In the Godhead, there is no confusion amongst themselves. It's just for us as human beings to understand God. To understand who God the Father is, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But within the Godhead, within the Trinity, there is absolutely no confusion, no chaos. Okay? So just you find it difficult to comprehend, understand, but you need to know we just believe, we worship one God who eternally exists in three different persons. Very important. Who eternally exists in three different persons okay so please don't forget that that's very very important okay um we also see that scripture establishes a uh, trinity or the godhead and so we look at various scripture passages where we see the trinity in action okay so we are going to look at various scripture passages where we see the trinity in action so where do we see the trinity in action first Yes, in Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3. So can somebody please read that? Genesis 1, verses 1, 2, and 3, please. You just have to keep pressing it and it comes on. Yeah, thank you. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and the void. The darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Amen. So in the beginning, who was there? God. And God created the heaven and the earth. And it says, Now the earth was formless and all of that, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, okay, so in the creation, we see the Trinity or the Godhead in action. So what do you think God the Father was doing? What do you think God the Father was doing in, in, in creation? He was giving the command, okay? So God the Father is someone who is the authority is someone who plans, someone who decides things, okay? So he gave the command, okay, that the earth be created and takes its form. And who brought all of this into, who did all of this? The Word. Jesus is the Word who proclaimed the words of the Father, okay? And it was the Holy Spirit that moved on the face of the earth and he caused or he brought about everything that we see into existence. Okay. So I'll say that again. God the Father planned and purposed, supreme authority who planned everything. He gave the command for things to be created, for things to take its form. Okay. And he did all of this by the, it was done, all of this was done by the Son who proclaimed what the Father had commanded, okay? And it was the Holy Spirit that was hovering. What's the meaning of hovering? Just moving on the face of the earth. And he's the one who caused, or he's the one who brought about everything into existence and order. All of you with me? Yes, no? Okay. 
The second place where we see uh, Trinity in action is at the birth of Jesus. Okay. Okay, so there's a question here from Jeevan in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Was God talking to Trinity or to. Uh, so, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, Let us make man. Is that what it says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26? Ma'am can't hear. Ma'am, your mic is muted. Ma'am can't able to hear you. Ma'am, check your mic. Sorry, where did I, uh, where did it, where did it mute? Where did I stop last? Sorry, I suddenly accidentally unmuted myself. So where did I stop? Where did you hear me last? Uh, can somebody on, on your mic you tell me please unmute question. and let me know? You had just started answering Online the question. Online students from the beginning? Answering the question. In the beginning of the class, Jeevan? No, you had just started answering the Can question. Can one of your on online students speech. please unmute your mics and tell me where did you lose me? Okay, you, when you were answering the question. Answering Thank you so much. Question. It's okay for you to unmute your mics and speak. It's perfectly yes. fine. We can hear your voices. You don't need to keep on typing in the chat. You can unmute and speak. Okay, so the question here is, Genesis 1.26, was God talking to Trinity or to someone else, the sons of God? Genesis 1.26, where it says, then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. So the us there, our there is all talking about the Godhead. Because if you look at it, it's uh, in your Bibles, it's a capital uh, us, you, capital W, okay? And hence, it's talking about Godhead. So the, the Godhead was speaking among themselves and saying, hey, let's make man in our image and in our likeness, okay? So we'll move on. Uh, the second uh, place where we see the Trinity in action is in Luke chapter 1, verses 32 to 35. So can one of you please read Luke chapter 1, verses 32 to 35, please? He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to Angel, How can this be seen? I do not know a man. And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One, who is to be born, will be called the Son of God. Amen. Thank you. So here, where uh, how do we see the Trinity in action? Come on. Do we see the God, God the Father mentioned here? Yes? No? Yes? Yes or no? Hello, class. All of you there? Yes, so is God the Father mentioned here? Where? As? Yeah. Son of the highest, Lord God, okay? Lord God, uh, uh, he will be the son of the highest, okay? Uh, is Jesus mentioned here? Is Jesus mentioned here? Yes. How is he mentioned? Son of God, okay? Is the Holy Spirit also mentioned here? Yes, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the highest. Or uh, also the Holy Spirit will come upon 
view. Okay, so God, yes, the Holy One. The Holy One who is to be born, the Holy One is talking about Jesus. Okay. So Holy Spirit or uh, the power of, the power of uh, uh, God Most High. Okay. So here we see Trinity also in action. Where else do we see Trinity in action? Yes, the baptism of the Lord Jesus. Okay. In the River Jordan. So can anyone else, someone else can read uh, Matthew 3. Can you give it to someone else, please? Matthew 3, 16 to 17. Can someone else read, please? Matthew 3, 16. Somebody who's not read, quickly. Someone who's not read. Give it to him at the back. Matthew 3, 16 and 17. When, when he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a door and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Amen. So, here do we see Trinity in action? Uh, how do we see God the Father in action? God the Father is speaking. Yes, there was a voice that came from heaven. And that voice is of God the Father. Do we see the Holy Spirit in action? Yes. The Spirit of God descending. Do we see Jesus there? Yes, the Holy Spirit coming on Jesus when he was baptized and also God the Father saying that this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Okay. Are you all understanding? Am I going a little fast? Is it fine? Okay. Joanne says, what about the Tower of Babel? What about the Tower of Babel? Can you elaborate on your question, please? What about the Tower of Babel? What is your question? Joanne, you can unmute your mic and speak so we don't lose out on any precious time. Wasn't the Trinity present? Well, the Trinity was always present. Even before the foundations of the world, during the creation of the world, during Adam, Noah's, David's, your, gra your grandfather's time, great-grandfather's time, present now, Trinity is always present because he's God, right? He's always present. He's eternal, has no beginning and no end. Yes. So did that help, Joanne? Okay, I think online students, you can, instead of typing, it will be really nice if you can unmute and speak quickly. I mean to say that there was a communication. Yes, there's always a communication in the Godhead. Yes. They are three di distinct persons, right? So they relate to each other. They are not, uh, they are not uh, some objects that don't relate. They are persons. They relate to each other. Genesis chapter 11. Yes, I know. Genesis chapter 11. Oh, you're saying Genesis chapter 11, verse 7, which says, let us go down and, they were, and confuse their language. Yes, the us there is again capital U. So it's talking about the Godhead. It's talking about the Trinity. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, so um, we look at the Trinity also mentioned in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Okay, can someone else please read Matthew chapter 28, verse 19? Someone who's not read, so we can hear all different voices. Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Is the, is the Trinity mentioned here? 
Yes, when you baptize, you baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. Uh, look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14. Trinity is also revealed in redemption. Okay, when God... Uh, 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 anyone else can read Hebrews 9, 14? Quickly. Pastor Mike here in the front. Hebrews 9, 14, please. How much more shall the blood of Christ go through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God? Cleanse your conscience from death, works to serve the living God. Yes. So here we see that when Jesus died on the cross, you know, the Son of God died on the cross. It was, he did everything to the power of the Holy Spirit, right? When Jesus did signs, miracles, and wonders, he did it through the power of the Holy Spirit that was in him. And he was able to offer himself up uh, without any spot or blemish to the Father. So here we see Jesus mentioned. He offered himself. It's talking about Jesus. Eternal Spirit. Who is the Eternal Spirit? Who is the Eternal Spirit? Holy Spirit. Okay, the Holy Spirit has the nature of God because he is God. So he's eternal. So he's referred to as the Eternal Spirit. Okay, and then here we see... Uh, God the Father mentioned as? Well, how is God the Father mentioned here? The living God. Okay. We look at um, uh, two more references about the resurrection of Jesus. One in Romans chapter 8, verse 11. The other one is Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Can uh, one of our online students please read Romans 8, 11? And can someone else read Romans 6, 4, please, online students? Yeah, there are 28 of you, so can one of you please unmute your mics and read Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus okay, from Joanne. the dead dwell in you, know, he that raised up Christ from dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Okay, in-person students, I think you can go ahead and read. Please wait for the mic. Romans 8, 11, please, first. 8, 11. Sorry, 8, 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit. Good you. Amen. Very powerful verse. Okay. So here do we see the Holy Spirit mentioned? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Do we see Jesus, Son of God mentioned? Yes, Jesus. Do you look at the Holy Spirit? The Spirit of him who raised Christ Jesus from the dead through his Spirit who dwells in you. And is the God the Father mentioned here? Son of man is Jesus. Son of God is Jesus. How is the Father mentioned here? Spirit of Him. Spirit of Him. Spirit of whom? Spirit of the Father. And this is a very powerful verse because it says, The Spirit of Him who raised Jesus back from death to life dwells in you. Who raised Jesus back from death to life? It's the power of the Holy Spirit, power of God. And that same power dwells in you. The same power will give life to your mortal bodies will quicken life in your mortal bodies amen okay yes okay El elkanah you want to read romans 6 4 you put up your hand oh you uh, you have been speaking but uh okay elkanah go ahead Therefore, I think the online students are not, we're not able to yes. hear the online students. Can you help Therefore, please? We Sorry, with him just a moment. Back. Therefore, we bury with him by baptism into death. Yeah, can I read like now? Christ. Mm. Therefore, we are buried Sorry? with him by baptism into death. No, no, Elkanah like is not, Christ. is unmuted. 
Somebody is reading, but they are, we can't hear them. Okay, I'm so sorry. Uh, we, we can we, we can hear him online. Glitch here. I think we need we to call Abhinas and help us. Okay, maybe during the break time. Okay, so we'll have. Um, we can well, hear you during the break time, but now we'll have the online students reading. Okay, so Romans eight eleven. You can something that you can declare over your lives when some people are um, unwell. You know, uh, death is looming large. Romans eight eleven is a very very powerful verse can someone else please read romans chapter 6 verse 4 romans 6 verse 4 give it to him please next to you oh yeah in, go ahead romans 6 4. yeah so here we see the father raised christ from the Dead through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. A uh, few more passages that we can look at is um, the martyrdom of Stephen, where Stephen was martyred. Acts chapter 7, verses 55 to 56. Can some of the ladies please read Acts 7, 55 to 6, 56? We can hear some angelic voices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Acts seven fifty five. I'm just joking. Acts seven fifty five to fifty six. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of hand of God. Okay, so he Stephen is being martyred. You know, uh, just before he was martyred or stoned. He sees heaven open, and what do what, who does he see? Doesn't see God, but he sees the glory of God. Holy Spirit. And who else does he see? Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Okay, and it says he was full of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so here we see also the Trinity in action. Now, why are we looking at all of these verses? To see if Trinity is really in the Bible, to see if God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit is God. And also when people ask you and tell you, hey, Holy Spirit is not God or Jesus is just the Son of God, He is not God, you can show them all of these references, okay? Um, yeah. Uh, Revelation chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. Can someone else read, please? Revelation chapter 5, verses 6 and 7. Revelation 5, 6 and 7. All is in your notes, so you can just read. And I beheld and lo. In the midst of the throne and the four living beings, and in the midst of the elders, to the Lamb, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the spirit. And he came and took the stool out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne, for he is the Lamb. Amen. So, do we see God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit here? Yes. How do we see God the Father? God the Father? Okay, God sent out. Okay. What else? The Lamb of God is whom? Jesus. The Lamb of God is Jesus. And uh, is the Holy Spirit mentioned here? The seven spirits of God. If you look at spirit, it's a capital S. Okay, so wherever the Holy Spirit is mentioned in the Bible, there's a capital S. Wherever it's referring to the spirit of man, it's a small s. Okay, we'll stop here and we'll come back after the break. Can one of you please call Abina so we can get this fixed, please? Thank you. I'll meet you after the break. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.